dance, Joan? Yes, Harvey. Well, I want you to because it's really in your honor. That's nice of you. I want the next dance, too. I won't. Excuse me, won't you? Well, Dad, Harvey's proposed again. I can't see why you don't like him, Joan. He's a nice fellow and smart, too. Bill up law for being the leading banker and... You mean the only banker, Dad. And when that oil well of his comes in, he'll be the richest man in the state. I want you to be happy, Joan. There's Harvey now. Okay, come on. This dance is good for two hours, so the coast ought to be clear. Doug Redford doesn't think Harvey will find oil. Who's Redford? A small-time rancher. Does he know more about oil sales than an expert? Well, he doesn't pretend to, but he is a good judge of human nature. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing, Dad, only... Well, Doug doesn't like Harvey, and I have a feeling he doesn't trust him either. I think it's a dirty trick of Harvey not to invite you tonight, especially when your girl's there. That's the reason. But it'll take more than him to keep me from dancing with Joan. Someday I'm going to take that Umbria apart just to see what makes him tick. You boys get your mask on while I scout around. Ditch those masks, boys. What's up? Don't ask questions. Come on. Carry a gun. You don't need one in your business. All right, 
Thank you. Start playing. <laughs> Stopped your bank from being robbed. Lucky for you, you didn't invite me. Think of all the money I've saved for the bank. Excuse me a minute. I almost forgot, Harvey. Here's your key. You should be more careful with it. What are you doing with it? Well, I told you I just stopped your bank from being robbed. Thanks. You'd better get out, Doug, before there's more trouble. I was about ready to go anyway. I got what I came after. And a lot more. Come on, boys. We're not appreciated around here. Wait a minute. Now what are you going to do? I haven't collected all my loot yet. Is that it? Hey, you've been held up before. <laughs> Don't forget we're going riding tomorrow. How could I? Good night, Joan. Good night. Probably none of my business, Joan, but why does your father insist on you marrying Harvey Moline? Well, Dad thinks I ought to like Harvey because he does. Thinks he's the catch of the year. He's liable to be yet. Oh, I don't know, Doug. Harvey isn't so bad. You stay here.
You had a narrow escape, partner. Yeah, but they'd just as well shoot me to scare me to death. I guess they didn't want you real bad. What were they shooting at you for? I don't know. All I done was ride up and ask them for directions, and they chased me away in lead. You say the community ain't very chummy, if you ask me. Did you recognize any of them? Nope. I'm a stranger hereabouts. One of those hombres looked like Spike Travers. I've been thinking for some time your dad ought to jail him. He's arrested him twice, but nobody will ever appear against him. He must know the right people. What do you mean? Nothing personal. Is your Paul the sheriff? Yes. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. I always make it a point to get acquainted with the local authorities. Saves time and trouble. I'll give you a hand. Okay, it's Harvey Moline. What's going on? He just chased off a nosy guy. I told you not to attract any attention. What happened to him? Well, Doug Redfern come a-riding and we ducked. Yeah, and he had your girl with him. Redfern keeps on, he's gonna land us all in the pen for a nice long stretch. What do you mean by that? Who do you suppose scared you with in the bank last night? Well, if he knows so much, why'd he tell the sheriff? Because he's smart, he's waiting till he gets enough evidence. I'm not in the spot to handle him just now, but I don't know of anything that's keeping you fellas from doing it. Well, now that you mention it, I don't know either. All right, then. Get busy. My name's Dawson. Lucky for short. Know where a fellow could get a job? What can you do? I'm a handyman with a shovel, but I kind of have bad luck. How's that? Well, I want to dig for gold, I get silver. Dig for silver, I get lead. If I could drill for oil, I'd strike water ashore. See, that reminds me. Ain't they all well being drilled hereabouts? Yes, there is. And here comes the man who's drilling it. Just who is that gent? Harvey Moline, the leading financial wizard of the county. Harvey? Why, no. What men? They probably saw him and ran. Those bad hombres know a fighting man when they see one. Don't they, Harvey? I don't know what you're talking about. Got any vacant jobs at that well of yours? No, I've got all the help I need right now. And still the well won't come in. Redfern, I'm getting tired of your sarcasm. Well, Harvey Moline, just what do you aim to do about it? Please, Doug. There's ways of dealing with your kind. Them's fighting words, Moline. Because you didn't smile when you said them. Someday you'll be telling me this country isn't big enough for both of us. And that'll be just too bad. Because we'll all miss you. I think you got a job for me. Say, is he mad at you? No. He's really got a kind heart. Now, if you keep after him, he's liable to break down and hire you. I'll do that. He's a funny old fellow. You know, Doug, I don't think he's as simple as he looks. Maybe not. I wish you wouldn't antagonize Harvey so. Harvey and I understand each other a lot more than you think. You'd better be nice to him. He'll be in oil yet. Yeah? So old sardine. <laughs> we better get going. I'm going to stop by the ranch on my way back.
Hello, Doug. Howdy, Al. Tell the boys I want them to keep their eyes open for Travers and a couple of his men. Right. Doug, why don't you ever wear that bandana I made for you? Well, I didn't want to tell you, but I lost it. Oh, that's too bad. But if you're real nice, I might make you another. Is that a promise? What do you think? I better get home before Dad sends a posse out after me. All right, John. Mr. Moline, can't you find a job for me? No, and quit bothering me. I'm busy. I'd do anything for money. Anything? Just about. Stick around. You might find work. Any news, Brooks? Not yet. But we should hit oil on another thousand feet. Uh, we'd better in right soon, too. Don't worry, we will. We'll need more money by the end of the week. More money? Well, you told me that last 5000 would be all you'd want. Well, I thought it would be. We've had accidents, delays. It's a tough country to drill in. I've barred to the limit already. This thing is ruining me. It'd be a crime to stop drilling now. We'll hit oil, sure. All right, all right. I won't be in town again for about a week. I've got to ship some stock. But I'll see you as soon as I get back. Well, I hope so. Goodbye, Doug. Goodbye. Is it? Yeah. You take charge here, Al. Get this stock to the loading pan. I've got another matter to look into.
sure you weren't followed? Well, I'm certain. But I didn't see that red front, Henry. What? Where? Well, where'd you see him? Don't get panicky. Down the flat driving some stock. He didn't see me. Good. Where's Matson? He's out there on guard. You take this, get a change into currency at the usual place, take the money to the well and give it to Brooks. Somebody's coming. You better get back. Say, hey, this sure is lucky meeting you here like this. I just going out to your well for that uh, job you promised me. I didn't promise you a job. I told you there was nothing for you. Well, I sure got to have something. All right, look me up in town. I'll find you a job just to get rid of you. That's my nice of you, Mr. Moline, and I'm grateful, too. And you can depend on me. I I'll... said see me in town. Thanks. Sonny, I'm sure it was Redfern. It couldn't have been. Well, maybe not. But it was just the same. And I suppose he fired that shot. Well, you, you got me there. Come on, let's see Harvey. He claims he's seen Redfern. Where? Up in them rocks, watching you. Are you sure it was Redfern? Well, it looked like him. Redford, all right. Come on, wait a minute. You'll never catch him. Besides, I've got a better way of handling him. I don't want to talk to you. Haven't seen you for a week. Where have you been? Busy at the ranch. Doug, I've been hoping Joan and Harvey would hit it off. And you're not exactly helping them to. Are you trying to ask me to stay away from her? Well, in a way, yes. I'm sorry, Sheriff. But I won't stay away from Joan until she asks me to. Harvey's had his way around here long enough. He has a habit of taking what he wants. And if I can keep Joan from marrying him, I will. What are you against, Malene? Right now, I can't say. But someday, I'll show him up for what he really is. Don't do anything you'll be sorry for. Anything I'd do to him wouldn't make me sorry. Fellas, 
Matson on the job? Yeah. He's busy taking care of Redfern's horse. Well, the main thing now is to keep track of him. Watch him every minute. Look out, you old fool. Oh, excuse me, gents. I didn't know this room was busy. I'll show him how busy it is. Forget about it, Spike. I don't like him butting in here like that. He might have heard something. Even if he did, he wouldn't know what it meant. We've got something else to think about. See that Redfern gets this, and he must know where it came from. I'd like to see him wiggle out of this one. This is for you, I reckon. Where'd you get it? Well, I found it on the bar. If you want to have another deputy, there's some tough characters drifting into town. I'd be glad to have another if the commissioners will allow it. I'll see to it that they do. I'll hold him for a while. Come on, let's go. What did you get, Sheriff? I don't know how much, but they cleaned the safe. Sheriff, I found this on the bank floor. You recognize it? Can't say that I do. Look, there's initials on it. D.R. Doug Redfern. I thought I'd seen that before. He was wearing it the night of the dance. Looks like Doug might have some explaining to do. Dad, you don't think he'd do a thing like that. He told me he lost that bandana. We just saw him running away from here. That's right. Another fellow with him, too. Better raise a posse, Sheriff. He probably wasn't alone in this. Uh, swear me in, Sheriff. I'm a raring to go. I could go to his ranch and arrest him. Why, that's the last place he'd go. 
We'll raise enough men to cover every trail out of this town, even if we have to wait till morning. Mr. Harvey's right. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Swear me in before I change my mind. Oh, all right, all right. Don't miss this. The sheriff and the rest of them will be busy on that false lead I gave them. Bangs, you plant the stuff. Matson, you make the phone call. But give Bangs time enough to get to Redford's. I get it. That ought to take care of Yes? Yes? Okay. Redfern's been spotted. He's headed for his ranch. Who is that? I don't know. What difference does it make? Let's get going. He's as good as God right now. Search the house. You are under arrest. What for? For robbing my bank last night. Here's some of the money, Mr. Mullane. Where's the rest of it? The rest of what? The bags of gold coin you took. Who says I took them? We've got plenty of witnesses. Oh. Take it easy, fella. All right, Harvey. I'll come to your party. Where's the rest of that money? What money? My money. Are you sure it's yours? Bring him to town. We expect 
expect to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Doug Redfern robbed the bank. And we will also show that bad blood existed between the defendant and our complaining witness, and that the defendant was heard to threaten him. Yes. I found this beside the bank safe after the robbery. Doug lost that the night of the dance. Do you know positively that he did? Well, he told me so. But you cannot state of your own knowledge that he did. No. That is all. Your Honor, I offer in evidence this horseshoe, identified as being from Doug Redburn's horse. It was found behind the bank the night of the robbery. Also, this package of currency, found in the defendant's house by a member of the posse. Gentlemen of the jury, have you arrived at a verdict? We have. The defendant has been found guilty as charged. The prisoner will be remanded to the custody of the sheriff and brought before this court tomorrow for sentence. Court adjourned. <laughs> Douglas Redfern, rise and face the court. You have heard the verdict. Have you anything to say as to why sentence should not be passed upon you? I've said plenty already, but it hasn't done me any good. Under the authority vested in me by the criminal code of this state, I sentence you to 20 years in the state penitentiary. You don't reckon Harvey expects us to dig up this whole red fern spread? If he don't find that bag of money, he does. He needs that dough and he needs it bad. Get busy. You don't expect to find the money in that tree, do you? No, but I'm keeping my eye on them hornets so they won't sneak up on me. Come on, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Try a little further to your right, Matson. What'd you say, Spike? I didn't say nothing to you. But I was. How'd you get here? You'll find out. Now turn around. Get over there. I'm still waiting for you to tell me what you're doing here. We're trying to find that money you stole from the bank. I suppose Harvey hired you, just like he did your evidence at my trial. Now get going. Not until we get that money. Oh, no? Look out! Them were black hornets! That's what you think. That's going back to the bank. Over my dead body. Now get gone. Pronto.
Take him with you and tell Harvey Moline he's next. And he told us to tell you you're next. Go find out how Redfern got loose. I hear he's outgunning for him and everything. Huh? Sure. Funny fast, too. Hey! Hey! So if Red Fern's ahead of the town, stand by for trouble, Jim. Hey, what? Well, this trouble's pretty bad, huh? Redfern's been paroled. Yes, parole to die. Beat it. Wait a minute, Doug Redfern. I know what you're here for. You're going to kill the sheriff and Harvey Moline. But you got me to deal with first. I don't know how you got here, but you're going back to Toronto. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. I can explain that. Read this. <laughs> What'd you find out? It's true. He's been paroled. Somebody's gonna sweat for this. Look out, it ain't you. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Only say Red turned a tough umbry, and he might come a shooting. Sure, I shot Travers, but he drew first. I don't doubt it, but other folks might. Listen, Doug, why don't you go to some new range where you're not known and make something of yourself? What's your interest in advising me like that? I'm thinking about Joan. What about her? She's going to marry Harvey Moline. Can't you see Harvey isn't what you think he is? He framed me for one reason, Joan. If you have anything against him, tell me. I'm sheriff. If you don't stop your talking... I'm through talking right now. Sooner or later, Harvey has got to stop lead. And I'm setting out to make it sooner. You shoot him and I'll see that you hang. Tomorrow, I'm going to the judge and have you put under peace bond. Tomorrow will be too late. There he is. The jailbird that just shot Spike Travers. I was just going to look you up, Moline. You and me, we're going to have a showdown. You beat the law just how I don't know. And you've shot down men who were after the money you stole. Seems the law don't hang for murder anymore. They don't even keep them in jail. But you, Redfern, you're going to hang. It won't do, Harvey. That shooting was in self-defense. And there'll be no hangings in this town. This is my town and my county. I run it to suit myself. And while I wear this badge, I take orders from no man. You incite a mob and I'll shoot you down. Some time ago, I said jokingly, this county was too small for both of us. This time, I mean it. I'm giving you until sundown to get out. So if I outstay the sun, I'm pretty fair game, am I? All right, I'll take you. No quarter ask or given. I can't jail a man for planning a killing. But this town stays clean. You go through with this, and I'll settle the winner. My advice to you is don't be fool enough to hit the street come sundown. Give me a room and go sundown. Number 12. Dad, you mustn't let them meet. Well, I've done all I can do. Mr. Milley. Speaking for the citizens of this town, 
Let me beg you not to go through with this gunfight. This fellow Redford is fast and tough. Yes, well, so am I. But you're too valuable a citizen to this town to take a chance with him. Let somebody fill in for you. Who, for instance? Me. Why, a fourth-rate gunman could kill you off before you could draw. Get that gun out of my middle, you old fool. You <laughs> see? You can't tell how far a fog can jump by the way he spots. <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Moline? Come into my office. I want to talk to you. Joan, what are you doing here? This is no place for you. Oh, I know it, Doug, but I had to see you. Doug. Now, you get out of here. You mustn't meet Harvey. He won't fight there. You'll be shot down. Oh, no, I won't. You will. I know him. He's planning it now. Please go. Are you pleading for his life or mine? Doug, I don't understand. Your dad said you were going to marry Harvey. Well, I've got something to say about that. You get out the back way. Just killed poor Lucky, boys. One this morning, one this afternoon. How much more is he going to get away with? There he is. Let's get him. How do you know Lucky is dead, Harvey? Because I... I saw him go to your room. And you sent him there to kill me. He's lying, boys. Take him. Back up, men. There'll be no lit floor in this town. Redman, you've killed your last man. Careful, Sheriff. It's you and me against this gang. What? Now we'll settle. Hold it, men! Lucky. You didn't get shot? Certainly not. Harvey hired me to kill Doug. So I framed this little shooting stunt in order to break Harvey's nerve. I represent the governor. Have ever since I've been here. And Harvey Maline has been fooling everybody in town but me and Doug Redfern. Sheriff, grab that man. He's one of them. Well, Jim. robbed his own bank in order to cover up the fact he'd appropriated bank money to drill that oil well. Then he framed it on to Doug to get rid of it. The governor paroled Doug when I reported the frame up. Then Doug came back here to help me spring the trap. Harvey's getting away. Jim, Buzz. Lock Matson up. Come on, he may need some help.
I need to convict Carver of looting his own bank. Pile him in the wagon, we'll head back to town. Hey there. I'm not especially interested as to what happens to you two. But please be careful of my prisoner and that evidence. <laughs> 